There has been an increasing loss of biodiversity in the world, with more species becoming extinct than ever. While many international treaties are requesting that countries monitor the decline of biodiversity more accurately, it has been difficult for ecologists to measure the impact of these losses on a global scale. But recently, researchers found that many countries may already have what they need for such monitoring, and it is just floating around them all by accident. Well, according to a recent study in Current Biology, a major source of such information already exists in the air. That's right, researchers investigated whether they could use air captured what is, what is known as environmental DNA, called eDNA. Tiny bits of DNA from living creatures float around in the air, and all it takes is some way to suck in that air and capture the eDNA on filters. And it turns out that those filters already exist in air quality monitoring stations that have been set up around the world for decades to monitor heavy metals and pollutants in the atmosphere. But researchers wondered if they could extract the trapped eDNA in those filters and then sequence that DNA. If so, could analyses of the resulting DNA sequence reveal which organisms are shedding DNA and thus what organisms live in that area and maybe even estimate the size of those populations? Now, those are big questions. But if they could, that would mean they could possibly even get an inventory of the species existing in a given area without ever actually seeing the actual plant or animal. Scientists are optimistic that this might just be possible. In fact, techniques for capturing and analyzing eDNA from the air were just recently discovered. Two studies, both published in Current Biology, demonstrated that it was possible to identify species in a zoo by simply sampling the air and analyzing the eDNA floating around. And that is just way cool. As an aside, any air monitoring of my house would reveal the presence of my two cats, especially this one who sheds tons of hair and for sure eDNA every day, both inside and outside. But my house is small compared to the big spaces monitored by those air quality monitoring stations. And could eDNA analyses work at those stations? They discovered an extraordinary amount of eDNA trapped on the filters from two locations in the United Kingdom. Specifically, they found eDNA from 880 distinct plants, insects, mammals, fungi, birds, amphibians, and more. The species included adorable little creatures like little owls, mischievous badgers, ever so pointy hedgehogs, and chatty songbirds. They also found several types of trees and crops, including wheat and soybean and cabbage. Now, that's a lot of information from such tiny little filter samples. According to the researchers, air quality monitoring stations have been capturing local biodiversity data in a systematic manner and on a large scale for many years. But the ecological significance of these samples has gone completely unnoticed because we didn't have the ability to analyze the eDNA and the filters until now. This advance could be an absolute game changer for tracking and monitoring biodiversity. Many countries already have air quality monitoring stations and many of them store their used filters for decades. eDNA is thought to be quite stable, just hanging out on those old filters waiting for modern day genomicists to sequence it. This could solve a global problem of how to measure past and present biodiversity at a massive scale. The researchers are now working to preserve as many filters as possible with the plan to analyze the trapped eDNA on old and new filters alike. This kind of research is a best case scenario. We get to learn so much more about plants and animals and we even get insights that can help save their ecosystems. Now, that is just way cool. <laughs>